building. So I joined in and wanted to really expand the community to incorporate a lot of emerging young artists that I noticed were working and distributing a lot of work online, but didn't have a physical platform for their work. So I organized an exhibition program, which is five shows each year that brings in uh, guest curators and a network of artists, usually 25 artists per show, and asks them to think about these ideas and artworks that are usually distributed online in a physical space. Um. I think it was my desire to feel a closeness with the works because I had a strong emotional reaction to them, which was pretty unusual because a lot of the content I see online is uh, consumed very quickly and easily forgettable. But a lot of these works had a certain resonance that I just couldn't let go of and I needed to experience them in a physical way. I wanted to have a deeper interaction with the works and with the artist. And I think the advantage of being in a physical space is that you have this contemplative distance that you don't have on the web. So you can spend more time with the works and um, get into them a little bit more deeply than you would if they were just a tab among other tabs. I think there's inherently a sense of community. Well, actually, I don't know if that's inherent in net art or just within this community that's there. Um, but at all of our shows, especially at the openings, there's this really strong, joyous feeling of, I know you from the internet, or like people meeting for the first time who are being introduced to each other and say, oh, I know you already. We're Facebook friends, or I follow your Tumblr, or I love you know, this project that you did. You already know some information. And even sometimes that can be problematic for art. When I'm looking at it, I see a lot of the same ideas and I can see these influences. And it's like the ideas seem to emerge from communities rather than individuals. And so it's kind of hard to represent them as a curator, or as a dealer, or as a gallerist, because you have to sort through the community and see what's the source of this idea. Where did it originally come from? And sometimes there isn't an answer to that question. And it was almost like approaching curating as an anthropologist, where you're um, inside a community and watching the way that ideas or images move through that community and then trying to see where they originate. It can be really difficult, but um, they tend to know, the artists tend to know where the idea started. And that doesn't really seem to be very important to them. But in well, I think what interested me so much about Dump FM to begin with was that they were using memes and images as tools for communication. It's a language. So even if a single meme might not add up to very much, as a collection, they add up to quite a sophisticated language. And there are people who really know how to use them to slam you or to compliment you or to educate you or to tase, like, to tase you or something. Um, but then, so it's part of, it's part of a, light, a larger dialogue, I think. Um, um, the term hacker is about taking something that already works, breaking it and figuring out what the pieces are. And that's what it's interesting to me about artists is that if you put them in a territory that's new, they're going to be the ones who are experimenting and breaking and showing the potential of whatever that certain field might be. And so for me right now, I'm very curious about the potential of technology. And so the artists who are considered hackers are really the ones who are trying to figure out the potential of what these tools could mean for themselves, for their own practice, but also for society. Great too. I, I know that myself, I have like some identities online on certain websites that might be different than how I would convey them, but that's what's so wonderful about the internet is that you can make up or create whatever identity you want. And that's what's so problem problematic about Facebook is that you are they're only able to have one sort of identity to everyone that you know, and you're not able to uh, have your own personal self. And Fine, yeah, yeah, sure. So I've actually been wanting to curate a show about Anonymous or about 4chan and doing a show that's where all of the works are 
anonymous, that there's no authorship to them, and seeing if that would work. But it's so antithetical to the way that the art world is constructed and the way that the commercial system is constructed that I think that that in itself is a risk to say that the author doesn't matter or that these works have value, intrinsic value, as works, but without having an artist related to them. So what comes to my mind immediately is uh, Chris Wood, the founder of Computers Club, uh, created this piece called Human Civilization. It's a Tumblr that it has an endless scroll, and as you're going through, it's photographs of uh, old computers that are now in landfills. So it's just a, a stream, 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 stream of death, the death of technology. And the